How I many know fear is the only thing that is keeping us back? Because we always think about, well, what if I failed? Question, what if you succeed? But we focus on those who are failing instead of those who are succeeding. Even though it's 1% of the people in the United States or around the world have all the wealth. Why? It's because they were willing to take risks when you were not willing to do it. And now today's word, part two of The Treasure of Time, Pastor Randy Morrison. How many glad we can spread the gospel? Yes, that's what we are doing. But we are so thrilled and excited to be able to do that. Come on, if you got a Bible or a tablet, uh, lift it up and make the devil mad this morning. Thank God for the word of God. It's life to those who find it. Health and healing to all our flesh. Amen. Uh, uh, the reason why I do that, Pastor uh, Tyrone told me that somebody criticized him because he did not open his Bible. I want to say to that person, you are a fool. Because the same thing you got here, I got it here. I may take time to turn, okay, turn, to, turn to Mark, and I can turn to Mark, boom. Time is of the essence. I only get a certain amount of time at you because after a while in my sermon, your brain will go somewhere else. So I got to try to keep your attention and I got to move real fast, amen. Thank God for the word of God, hallelujah. Father, once again, we are so thankful for all that you have done this past week. God, we had some challenges this past week. We overcome some things. We either coming out of something or going into something. But God, I thank you. Just as you was with Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you will be with us in the fiery furnace, the fourth man walking in the furnace with us, Father. And I pray today that each and every one of us, God, will grab a hold of your truth because you said it is the truth that make us free. Enhance our mind, enhance our lives. Take us from where we are to the place you'd rather have us be in life. Help us not just to settle for what is when there is possibility of things to come. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, you know, this year we are trying to encourage you to make progression in your life, movement. I hope that by the end of this year you will not be stuck because if you are stuck, that means you are not growing. Amen. Are you still in the house this morning? So we are talking about the treasure of time. How do we use our time wisely? Because we have discovered that time is the most valuable resource we all possess, and it is also the most limited. Do you know you have limited time? The older you get, the less time you got. I mean, I teach realities. Two people. The older you get, the less time you got. I don't care if you try to defy it. I don't care if you try to deny it. You're getting old. <laughs> I can talk about getting old because I'm getting old. The day you're born is the day you start dying. Nothing lasts forever. But only the place where we have devoted our time can truly reveal our possession in life. Where you are possessed, where you are positioned in life is based on time either spent wisely or time squandered. I got an old, old post living in my house, she called my mama. So I'm learning a lot of lessons just by watching her sitting there. Every day I said, the dead is raised. Glory be to God forevermore. Celebrate it, mama. Life well spent or life squandered. That's the question you need to ask ourselves. Am I squandering my time or am I investing my time? Remember what Ephesians 5 and verse 15 says. It says, live life. Live what? Life. Live life then with due sense of responsibility. Not as men who do not know the meaning of life. 
There are so many people who just exist and are not living. He says, live life, not just to exist, not just to breathe in and breathe out. The more I look at people and I, I, I wonder, do they know why they are here? Why they are existing? I think the reason why people get so depressed because they do not know why they exist. The Bible said, hope the foot, make it the heart sick. Amen. If you have no hope, you will get depressed. But when you got hope and you understand you are here on assignment and there is something for you to do, some places for you to go, come on, you can't get depressed, man. No, uh Hallelujah. So he says that we need to, 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 to not to live as those who do not know the meaning. As a believer, you know the meaning for your existence. The moment you get saved, the moment Jesus Christ becomes the Lord of your life, things begin to change. Jesus said, I've come that you might have what? Life. Not existence. Uh-huh. And have it more abundantly. The Amplified says, till that life began to overflow. <laughs> Amen. Till it began to overflow. See, overflowing in the Middle Ages, overflowing in old age. Come on, somebody. Woo! I just love this thing. Make, since you know what the meaning of life is, make the best use. What kind of use? The best use. Are you using your time wisely? Are you making the best use of the time that you have? The best use of the 24 hours that is given to you. Well, I ain't getting enough sleep last night. Well, that's your fault. See, the way you beat uh, changing time, if the time goes forward, you know, if it's 8 o'clock, make it 9 o'clock. Hmm? I, I was up late last night, but I know it was 1. But it was a 12. But it's 1. Huh? Something you've got to project some things. Put some things in the future, praise God, and expect it to do some things for you. Make the best use of your time. Whose time? Whose time? See, we like to make the best use of other people's time. In other words, we squander it, we waste it. But your time is your time. My time is my time. So leave me alone. Right? Do you have time? No. <laughs> do, you have, do you have time? No, 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 no. The time I got is for me, not for you. Because people love to squander or waste other people's time. Have you ever go, go to some places you're invited somewhere and you said, oh my God, I'm just wasting time here. Because nothing has been accomplished. No new revelation about life. They're talking about things that will not bring any value to their lives. I will wait for all the amens to die down. Yeah. Make the best use of your time, despite all the evil of the day. See, 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 Pastor, that's the reason why I can't use because of all the, e- the evils, the troubles, the disappointment, and all those things that is happening. All those things are designed to delay you and to keep you in a place where you do not grow and learn. Jesus said, in this world, you will have, have trouble. You don't need to go look for trouble. Trouble has a way of finding you. But in spite of that, make the best use. In other words, when you go through something, you need to take some notes and ask yourself, what can I do to benefit from this? How can I turn this into some value for me? We don't do that. We just want to spend our time just kind of uh, in the molly grubs of life. Uh, Nobody knows. The trouble I see, that is a dumb (laughs) son. Nobody knows the trouble I see. Like you're the only one on the planet that's going through something. You will not leave this earth unscathed. If you're not going to something, you are coming out of it. Uh Come on, somebody. 
You see, friends, if we are to make the best use of our time, it is essential to conduct a time evaluation. You, you, need, you need to stop uh, every single, at the end of the week, the weekend, the time that you're supposed to be relaxing and rejuvenating yourself, you, you need to be uh, evaluating some things. Now, how did this week go? What did I accomplish this week? Did I get what I need to get done this week? No, you just blast to it, you know. Can't wait for the weekend. You know what happened on the weekend? People get weak. Because what do they do on the weekends? They get drunk, take dope, get wasted. So that's why they call it a weekend. I want to find a strong end, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen? So, Time needs to be evaluated. We need to ev evaluate our time based on who or what fills our day. What is filling your day? If you don't fill your day, somebody else will. I guarantee you, somebody else will. You know, sometimes uh, people say, you don't answer your phone. Why don't you answer your phone? Did you listen to the message I placed on my phone? Please leave a message. I'll get back to you sometime. Huh? Because you're not calling me to say, Pastor, I got a billion dollars for you. You're not going to answer the phone real quick, don't you? Huh? Huh? But anytime some person calls you and you know the number they call you, what do you say? What are they calling me about? Those are time thieves. Man, people can steal their time. Social media can steal their time. That's one of the biggest, the newest and latest time thief is social media. And, and many people spend so much time scrolling through the social media and reading stuff that fill in the mind that will not help them in the evaluation of their own lives. We, we want to live our lives through other people. What, we so nosy, what other people, what, what, what are they doing? Do you know this about, you know more about other people than you know about yourself. Do you know so-and-so make so much money? Well, how much are you making? Then you find out how much you're making and you get mad because you know you cannot equate yours with theirs. You don't get excited and full of joy when you're on social media. You just get depressed or jealous of somebody else. Yeah. Or looking for some gossip. <laughs> Why nobody want to tell the truth? Why? Evaluate your time. Find out who is filling your days. Because if we do not make any assessment, it could easily be, this, be distracted by something or someone else who does not contribute to our personal growth and well-being. It's people that comes into your life is contributing. Or there's, there's, there's taking things out of you. See, people want to make a withdrawal but no deposit. How many of you know if you keep making withdrawal from your bank account withdrawal, after a while it will be not sufficient funds? That's why some of us are depleted with our lives. We bankrupt spiritually, emotionally. Why? Because we allow other people to drain the life out of us. Preach it, Pastor Randy. You see, every one of us is gift with three essential as assets for success in life. Do you know you have some assets? No, no, I'm not talking about the ladies behind. <laughs> I just had to say that one, you know, see. Because that's all some of them got. <laughs> I don't want to see your butt. Why, well, ladies, why do you guys do it? Well, why do you do that? 
You know what that is for? No, I'm not going to leave it alone. I'm gonna... Don't let me go there. Don't let me go there. I just deal with realities. We spend more time on things that does not bring any value to our lives. But the assets I'm talking about is time, talent, and treasure. That will get you somewhere if you know how to use it. Time serves as our uh, assigned period in this life. God assigned you time which turned into years. Right? See, because if you, you keep on living, you will keep getting older. Then that means you have time. But the majority of time, as you keep living, start to go behind you instead of ahead of you. You see, we think we're counting up. We should be counting down. Mm-hmm. See, during our assigned period, we need to learn how to navigate the difficulties of our existence. See, people just fall and then they're stuck there. Life is to be navigated. You've got to be like water. Water knows how to navigate. You can't stop it. No matter what you do to stop water, it will find a way around, over, or under it. That's what our life's supposed to be. Finding a way over, around, or under. Not being stuck. Not nobody knows the trouble. Wait a minute. There got to be a way. Where there is a will. There is a way. There is a way. There is always a way. God will always show you a way. Because he put something within you called time, talent, and treasure. Because I, I think sometimes we don't understand that our assigned period is to be able to navigate the difficulties of our existence by making choices and developing relationships that shapes our experiences. Developing relationships that will shape our ex life experiences. See, talent uh, represents our inherent ability. We all do not have the same ability. Get that straight. God Give to each one according to their what? Ability. Matthew 25. To one he gave five. To one he gave two. To one he gave one. Why? Because one who had five can handle it. The one who has two can handle it. The one who had one was irresponsible with even the one he had. That's why Jesus said that when the master came back, he says to the one who did not Produce with the one that he had. He says, you are slothful and you are lazy servant. I know it's not what we want to hear in this culture today. Because we, we prefer to be non-productive than be productive. Woo so it's an inherited ability. It is really the raw material of our potential. <laughs> when you look at that baby, a uh, 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 baby that is just born, a six week or ten week old, baby, they, they have some potential. The baby has potential to grow here. See, because when you look at a baby with a bald head, that's not all there is. Now they might lose a little running light by that. The potential to grow here is there. They have no teeth in their mouth. They may gum you, but give them a chance. Progression is coming. You can't push your, your hand in a 16 year old kid mouth and go goo 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 anymore. You might be missing a finger because they got some potential with them teeth. 
I never used to forget when my son was growing up, you know, we, if I'm eating a steak or something, you know, uh, uh, and they, ha, ah, ah, ah. I say, you want this thing? You think you have another thing? Ah, ah, nah, nah, nah. Put it in the mouth. They can't chew it. Why? Because they don't have the teeth yet. But they try to gum it to death. Huh? But the potential, you know that the potential of a child is to grow. If the child is not growing, then you question, is there something wrong? If you're not growing in your faith and growing in your abilities and becoming better than you was yesterday, maybe there is something wrong with you. Huh? You cannot grow to my ability. I cannot grow to somebody. I grow to my ability, the ability that God has given me and the time that God has given to me. Using the talent, the raw material that lies within us, waiting to be discovered. Do you know everything in you is waiting to be discovered? Everything you need is inside of you. Everything you need is inside of you. You are wealthy, you don't even know it. It's just in raw material form. So you, you spend some time looking at somebody else who minding their own business. Huh? They, they, they are doing what they need to do with the time that they have, and then you get, how in the world could we get jealous of somebody else when you had the same 24 hours that they had. They had us to turn the clock forward just as you had. The rich turn the clock forward. The poor turn the clock forward. The rich get excited saying, praise the Lord. I'm going to get up more early. The poor say, oh my, I need some more sleep. A little sleep, a little falling of the hand, so shall poverty run over you. This is some good stuff. So when you, you begin to discover that talent and begin to nurture it and begin to perfect it, it can become the tool to which you interact with the world, the workplace. You take your talent to the workplace. Your talent supposed to be for sale. Hmm? Then the one at five went in and he did something with it. He trade. See, you sell your time for the money you got in your pocket. <laughs> the treasure that's embodying our intellectual wealth. Intellectual wealth, ideas, concepts of knowledge, wisdom, and creative abilities over the course of our lives. We embody, God give you treasure. He give you an intellect, a mind, a mind that can be creative, a mind that can find a cure for cancer, a mind, come, 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 come on somebody. Those things that you see does not happen. This is somebody's mind. I am wearing somebody's intellect. Are you hearing me? That's why it's very important what you think. Your thoughts run your life. See, some people need a checker from the neck up. Because where the majority of the problem is, is not external, it's internal. It's the way you think. As a man thinketh in a subconscious mind, so is he. Subconscious mind is where you store things. You store your pain, your hurt. <laughs> it, it's amazing where we store in our treasure, treasure, bad stuff. I remember what it, that's all. How come we can only remember the bad things and never remember the good things? 
Somebody will accomplish a lot in life and they make one mistake and you bury them in there. And don't realize all the other stuff. Yeah? You, you remember that David committed adultery? Yeah, but he take a dry and dung too. He saved Israel from captivity. Nobody remember that. We always look for the bad. Why? Because our mind is polluted. The prodigal son father saw him. He said, my son who was dead, now he's alive. And the elder brother, them, them religious Christians. Yeah, I've been here. And I, how come I? He said, you're with me all the time. You could have access to all the stuff he had access to. He was dead, but now he's alive. He's so glad to have him back. See, God is more concerned about your, your comeback than your setback. God get excited when you get up again. God get excited when you take a mess and make a message out of it. To him that overcome, not to him who failed, not to him who gets stuck in the molly grubs of life, to him that overcome will God grant. See, God is for overcomers, not losers. Come on, read the B.I.B.L. You'll find out. The treasure that you have given us, we need to, be, to begin to, to experience the, the result of it. Treasures empower us to be innovative, to solve complex problems. That's what your intellectual wealth is supposed to do. You go to school to learn how to die Guess stuff and how to be able to solve. Is that what you go to school for? To, to have the skills to be able to what? Now you pay four years of college to, to, to educate yourself and you can't even solve your own problem. Pastor, uh, I get a problem. I need a job. Go get a newspaper. Right? I guarantee if you get a newspaper, you will find a, a little saying, help wanted. My son said, download the app. Well, download the app. I got some old people here, though, Tyrone. I got to use boat to see. Because I see some people still using the newspaper. I see some people. This is one that get me. They're still using the checkbook and going to the grocery store. And the thing, they just want you to know they're going to torment you. I'm right? not going to change for nobody. No progression. Get stuck. I'm preaching. See, you need to have the capacity to use your intellectual wealth to solve complex problems and to connect with others on a profound level. How do we connect with people? It's true words, true our communication. And, and some people, you, you cannot communicate with them because they're not on the same level intellectually. I'm not on the same level intellectually with uh, Max Sharona. If you know Max Sharona, sometimes I had to take a dictionary, pause the tape, and look it up. But somebody ought to say, yeah, I understand what you're saying. You know, you go to the doctor and they use some big words. Say, can you break that down for me, please? Because I'm not on that level. I don't get intimidated. That's not on that level because that's where they are. But thank God for Webster Dictionary. Thank God for the internet. Thank God for Google. Hallelujah. I always tell preachers, I say, you know, you used to preach and you used to say, well, the Greek said this. You better watch it because now people could go right on their phone, go on to Logos and look up what you just said. So you better know your stuff. 
know what they're talking about. Each of these elements holds the potential to be transformed into financial assets. Your time, your abilities, or talent, and your intellect, treasure. That's what you use to transform into financial assets. Money does not come by praying. I'm going to keep saying that until some of you religious Christians get that. Lord, I need some money. Lord, please send me something. He ain't sending nothing. If prayer can give me money, I'll be praying a lot. I discover prayer, praying for money will not get you money. Because if praying for money produces money, I want to ask the question, who is the intercessors for Bill Gates and Elon Musk? You, you get mad. He's not a Christian. He, he's just using his intellectual properties. <laughs> We've been lying so, for so long. Thinking that it's God's job to do. It's not God's job to do everything for you. His job was to make sure that the seed of the woman crushed the head of the serpent, talking about Jesus Christ, who came to the earth to redeem us from S-I-N, sin, which causes us to come short of the glory of God, which keep us from fulfilling God's word for our lives to be fruitful and multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. That's what Jesus Christ came to do, to restore us to God's original intent. That's the gospel. It's not so we can put our brain on pause, come into a church and sit down and have a preacher preach to us what we can do. You shouldn't be doing this, and you shouldn't be doing that. This is a sin, and that is a sin, and the other thing is a sin. My God, like one person <laughs> said to Casey Treat one time, he says, why don't you preach on sin? He said, why should I preach on sin? You know how to do that. See, people do not know how to live their lives successfully. Right? When you come into this place, I should inspire you. I should wake up the dreamer on the inside of you. Because every one of you, if you're not saved here, all you got to say is Jesus Christ coming to my life. But I'm speaking more to people who believe in God. People don't want to hear about your religion. They want to, could what you believe help me? Still bother me when I hear that song, as a missionary came and sung to us in our island in Trinidad, you know, and say, hey, God does love us so much. God loves you so much. And he wants you to go to heaven, you know, and when you get to heaven. So the song used to go, you know, I got a shoe and you got a shoe. All God's children got a shoe. When we get to heaven, we will put on our shoe and walk all over heaven, heaven. And I look at my feet and there was no shoe. Oh, we had, we had you know, uh, 200,000 uh, Hindus get saved. Liar, liar, pants on fire. You think they get saved like you get saved here and then they tell mama, I know Jesus and she don't kill you. They had to count the cost. Because it's not easy to live the, the God life in certain countries today. We got to quit lying about a lot of stuff. Why? Because I, I, I believe we don't understand that God wants us, you as an individual, to, to uh, uh, live a life in such a way. Like the saying goes, I know you said it's carnal or worldly, but I think it's the truth. Live in your best life. Live in life that you will not regret after you get old. 
You see, the quality of our lives is not determined by the number of years we live. How many of you know people who are 70, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years old, but they got something wrong with them? Hmm? Like I said, I got an old person in my house, and I, I see certain things. I hear certain things. Why this is hurting? Them? Why that is hurting? Them? Oh, this is hurting. Why can't I can't feel this? And, and I go, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> hmm? Because sometimes that's all people got to look for when they get old. It's for the things that they're trying to not to have now, but it's looking around. It's not determined by your number of years you live. Rather, it is determined by the number of experience. That's what I like. We have during those years. What are you experiencing with your life? How are you experiencing life? On the good end or a bad end? Same world. Some people are having a good life and some people are not. And God is no respecter of persons. Remember, he gave each one of us 24 hours in a day. The rich man have the same amount of hours in a day that the poor man has. So don't come and tell me that life is not fair. Who in the world said life's supposed to be fear? Amen. Amen. It's supposed to be fear. Everybody should have the same amount. You do. Same amount of 24, same amount. He don't have 24 and a half. Now that's unfair. But we all have the same amount of time. It's how you use it, what you do with it. How you invest it? How you squander it? Okay, Lord, they, they, they're not shouting and jumping big. Because I didn't tell them that you will just throw money down from heaven. Listen what Psalm, the psalmist David says in Psalms 90 verse 12. He said, teach. Teach us to number our days. That, that, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to teach you to number your days. Be aware. Be aware that time, the clock is sticking on you. Be aware of it. You're not going to remain where you are five or ten years from now. Change is the inevitable. Things that were strong and powerful begin to get weak and flabby. It's amazed me when people die, you know, they never put a picture of the age that they die at. They put a picture when they were 22. <laughs> yeah. and that been, you've been there, done that. No, I want to see what's going on now. How is your life now? Hmm? You cannot recoup the years. That's why you've you got to make sure that you make decisions that can give you good experiences. Teach us to number our days. All right. That we may gain. Why we need to number our days? That we may gain. See, in other words, the older you get, the smarter you're supposed to be. That's right. That's right. Amen. The only, you, because you have what? Life experiences. Hmm? See, I like old people when they're you know, back in the islands going up, you know, and they're, they're sitting there, you know, on the chair. Say, boy... Do not do that. Ah, I told you. <laughs> I just love it. Huh? See, if you don't learn through teaching, you're going to learn by experience. But you are going to learn. You're not going to leave and escape. You're going to learn what to do and what not to do. That's the school of continual learning. That I may gain a heart of wisdom. So we should be smarter. You see, a heart of wisdom is the ability to interpret our lives through God's eyes. That's why God says, uh, 
If any one of you lack what? Wisdom. Let him ask of God. Didn't see if he lacked money. He didn't see if he lacked this. He said, no, it don't have wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. And all they get and get understanding. I like what the, the New Living Bible uh, phrase this. James 1.5 If you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him. <laughs> I think that's deep. See, when we do not know what to do, we ask somebody else. Now you don't want to know what God, not, not what somebody else thinks you should do. Because everybody have an opinion of how you should live your life. Like they're living theirs. Well I, well, I think, no, 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 I don't want your thoughts, man. Because your thoughts are limited to your exposure. And if the exposure is limited, your thoughts will be limited. That's why I read a lot of books. I don't want to have limited thoughts. Because yeah? somebody knows something you don't know. Somebody is smarter than you. Somebody's better looking than you. Somebody's more richer than you. So if you want what they have or what they got, then you need to go communicate with them and so they can what? Teach you. Teach us to number our days. See, you got, you, got, you got to accept that somebody can teach you something you don't know. That's what all counsel does is to bring your attention to something that you're not doing. Because if you're doing it, you wouldn't be going to them. And sometimes we, we know what to do. The Bible says, if you know what to do and do not do it, it's a sin. And in other words, it comes short of the mark. Christians are sinning every day and they don't even know it. Because they're not doing what they're supposed to do. I hate that person. You're not doing what they're supposed to do. The Bible said the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So if you cannot love that person, how can they say love God when they do not love your fellow man, so you're sinning. See, we preach about all the external sins, but we never preach about the internal ones. That is more deadly. Read the, the, the six or seven sins that God hates in the book of Proverbs. It has nothing to do with what you harassing people about. It's all internal stuff. That's why God said to Cain, sin light where? At the door and you must what? Rule over it. Come on, look at somebody and tell them there is something you can do about your life. So if you're confused with your life, if you feel that you're not making any progress with your life, if you feel you don't have the wisdom to deal with this thing called life, my Bible and your Bible says, if you lack it, ask God. If something goes wrong with my car, my Mercedes, I cannot take it to Joe down the street. I got to take it back to the, the one who manufacture it. Right. I got to find a dealership, a Mercedes dealership, not a Chevy. They, Chevy can still try to fix it, but it's still got to go to the Mercedes to get the parts. Yes. Yes. Right. That's right. So why, why doesn't go straight to the Mercedes? Well, a Chevy is cheaper. Watch out when you go for cheap stuff. Hmm? See, as a man, save some money. No, there's no such thing as saving money because you're going to spend it somewhere. I saved $15 on this, but you're taking to find something else. So did you really save $15? See, that comes from when you live in a while, you begin to know some stuff. That's when you start to ask questions because people say things sometimes and you wonder, huh? 
Huh? Saving for a rainy day. Woo, you better get an umbrella. <laughs> I'm just going to save up all my money. Yeah, then you're going to die, and the kid's going to take it and go on vacation. Don't get me wrong, I believe in saving. But you save for a purpose. Not just saving because you don't want to run out of money. You know, oh, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to run out of money. You can't run out of money. Money is all around. I said your wealth is inside of you. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can handle me. Some of you are looking at me like, because they don't teach you that. The, 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 you don't see that on television. They talk about the problems but no solutions. So if you want to know what God wants you to do, ask him and he will gladly. Look at this. God will See, God is waiting. Why did you ask me? Why did you ask me? Because we think we can do things on our own. We think we can figure it out by ourselves. There is something about life you can never figure out by yourself. God created you. He knows what's in your body. He knows your DNA. He knows how it works. And things is not working, ask him. God, what I need to do. So I can reduce this happening in my life. And he will tell you. That's why Solomon was so blessed by God. When Solomon went before God and saying, God, I, I got all these problems. I got to help solve these problems with the people. And God, here comes a, a woman. Two women came and one said that was her child. And the other said, it, it, it was my child. And he got confused. He didn't get his conks together and talk about it. He went to God. And God asked him for, what, what do you want? Ask me anything. And Solomon said, hey, make me more rich. I need more money. I need more wives. <laughs> no. Solomon asked God for wisdom. See, we ask God for the wrong things. You asking God for some money to pay your rent. So what will happen after your rent is paid? You're going to go back to God and ask for more? Or you're going to ask him for wisdom. See, what do you need to pray for creative ideas? Don't pray for money. Because if you pray for money and you get money, you pray for $100, you get $100, that's all you're going to have. But if you, if you pray for wisdom and you get an idea that's worth more than $100, and then what happens, you, you, be, you sell that idea sometimes, you don't keep it, somebody's going to sell it. And they say, I just need royalty from everyone that you sell. Uh-huh. Pastor friend of mine in Detroit have a, a guy in the church who's wealthy, and he had an idea to, build a, to, to create a screw that goes in the engine of the Chevy and, and uh, the Ford and different vehicles in the engine. It always breaks, so God gave him an idea for that. And then uh, he, he sell it for $350 million. But he didn't stop there. Okay. He says, I want six cents for every screw that you sell. Wow. He said, I'm royal. Uh-huh. T. <laughs> Woo! Huh? See, if you just ask for God to do something, so you just, oh, that's for me how to do it. No, 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 no. See, you, you, see God, what, what did, what did uh, Paul say? That God can do. Hmm? He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all, that who? That you ask or think. Reason why we don't ask God for things? Why? Because we got a poor mindset. Well, you know, I don't want to be too greedy, you know. Oh, stop it. Hmm? I don't want to look, I don't want to feel, you know, because if I get too much, you know, I wouldn't serve God. Biggest lie you ever told in your life. Abraham served God. He had cattle and gold. He had every single thing. 
Well, sometimes the devil will give you money to get you to backslide. I've been serving God for a long time. He never tried that one. Right. <laughs> I will love the devil to tempt me with money. <laughs> Lots of it. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You see, that's all religious lies we believe. That, there's no wisdom in that. Because once you have the wisdom, you'll know how to deal with finances. Hmm? So he said, you've got to ask him. Quit asking everybody else. Ask him, and he will gladly tell you, for he is always ready. Now, God is not only glad, he's also ready to give you, look at this, bountiful, bountiful supply of wisdom. Oh, the overflowing. Come on. That's what Jesus talked about. I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly until it overflow. Yes. Yes. We are not supposed to be the dumbest people on the planet. Like one man said, uh, religion is the opium of the people. Because we're more interested in just being religious than being successful God's way. Look at God is in a given business. I said God is in a given business. I said God is in a given business. He's in a supplying business. He supply what? Wisdom to all who ask him. He will not resent it. God doesn't say, oh, I wish I didn't give you that. Oh, sure, I think I need that for the angels. God have abundant supply. If you don't have it, he make it. Is this the God you serve? Is this the God that sent Jesus Christ to the earth? The, the word became in flesh and dwell amongst us? Isn't it what Jesus demonstrated to us? There is no lack. There's abundant supply. When you bring your little, put it in the hand of God, it become much. Come on, people. Yeah. Don't listen to religious leaders who is lying to you and telling you that you should just wait for heaven. I say, heaven can wait. I know I'm going there. If I know I'm going someplace, why don't I enjoy my life on the way to get there? See, I want a little heaven on earth. So when I get to heaven, I'm not going to be walking around going, wow, oh my God, woo, look at that, look at that pearl, oh my Lord Jesus. Because that's what some of you are going to be doing, you're going to spend your time looking around. Oh my. You know, the Bible said there will be tears in heaven. Half an hour of tears. You know what you're crying about? You know you'll be crying because, oh, I made, oh, I made heaven. No, 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 no. You could be crying, crying because God will just uh, pull back the veil of your mind and take you in a rerun and show you all the things that you could have hidden in plain sight and you did not know it. When you get there, that's what you're crying about. You mean, God, <laughs> you, you mean I didn't have to be poor? Mm -hmm. Right? What do, you think God, what do you think God will say? When Jesus said, well done, a good and faithful servant, was after they took the five and multiplied it. Right. Not before. Right. I want to hear, well done, good and faithful servant, Randy Morrison, enter into the joy, enter into my kingdom. Yeah, I want to see the angel flapping the wings. Here comes Randy. Here comes, whoa, hey, hey, hey. Whoa, thank you, giving him high five. Woo! Not walking in there. Oh, I'm so glad I made it. I want you to realize you're serving God Almighty. Amen. And He gives you the treasure of time. Don't squander it, use it wisely. Let's stand to our feet. Hallelujah. 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 What are you going to do this week that will bring value to life? What are you going to accomplish this week that you can look at next week and say, 
That's good. Because everything that God ever created, he put his hand on, he said, it was good. For it was good. Talk about your life. Talk about your home. And talk about you at 20 and 30 and 40 and 50 and 60 and 70 and 80 and 90. I'm talking about your life. How are you spending it? Or are you just squandering it? And sitting in a chair waiting for death to come and get you. Love what one 86-year-old woman says. No grass is going to grow underneath my feet. She's going to keep living. Interview some people who was in the 80s and ask them, how did you get here? How did you get to this point of your life that you're depressed and you're just waiting? How did you get here? I even ask people I meet in the streets and beg it for money. I say, how did you, how did you get here? Yes, yes. This was not your dream. No. More bad choices. Life happens. But it's not what happened. It's how you respond to what's happening. Let's bow our heads. Father, God, Help us to realize that time is of the essence. Help us to evaluate the moments, the days, the years, the months. Help us to take inventory what we need to do, what we need to subtract, what we need to add. Help us not just to be a, a follower of society's concepts of life. Help us to realize that the life that we have is not granted forever. So help us to use our time wisely. Redeeming it because the days are evil. Touch my brother, touch my sister. Help them, oh God, to have a hunger and a passion to begin to do more, do better with what they got, Father. Help them not to be stuck amongst people who's going nowhere. Help them, Father God, to break out and become all that you said they can be. Help us to have progression to the future that we desire to have. In the name of Jesus. I pray for you today. If you're here, Jesus is not the Lord of your life. Think about it. There's eternity to gain and a hell to shun. But it's based on decision made right now in the present. Let him become the Lord. Turn it over to him. Let him show you how he wants you to live. And the person he wants you to be. You're not designed to be a counterfeit. You're designed to be the real thing, baby. Live in the God kind of life. It's my prayer. I decree over your life today, the Lord bless you and keeps you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace in the absence of all things harmful. And the presence of all things beneficial. I decree over your life nothing is broken. Nothing is missing. In the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Ghost. Go and live your life. The way God intended for it to be. In Jesus name. God bless you.